video is partly all over the place, but potty training is all over the place, so I think it kind of works. <laughs> what was I saying? <laughs> this is not your average potty training video. <laughs> I'm not here to tell you a list of things to do. I'm not here to tell you what method of potty training to do. I'm not here to tell you that if you follow this step-by-step -step process that you will end up with a potty trained child and it will cause you no trauma, no frustration, and just unicorns, rainbows, pixie dust, and I don't know, apple pie. My issue with YouTube and social media in general is that it's a highlight reel and I feel like so many of the videos out there are so unrealistic about things that are, I don't want to say normal, but things that mothers or children will go through with the course of their life. Pregnancy videos, birthing videos, potty training videos. There is such a scarce amount of realistic videos. And those videos that I find completely unrealistic, I'm not saying that those people are lying. I'm saying that that was their experience. And I'm honestly, and I can truly say this, I'm very happy for you that that was your experience. But let's not pretend like it's everyone's experience. I am sick and tired of unrealistic potty training videos. So yeah, like I said, I'm not going to share with you the list of things to check off and a routine to go through and follow step by step until you reach the end and it'll only take it two hours. I'm not here to tell you that. I'm here to tell you how I potty train my experience. I'm here to tell you the things that I've learned, things that if I could go back to the very beginning of first time potty training bed that I would have loved to have told myself or I would have loved to have someone else like preach it to me. When I potty trained my oldest, that was one of the worst experiences I've ever had as a parent. I, I cannot fully explain how horrible it was. <laughs> um, I just tell people I have a form of potty training PTSD from that experience. It was difficult. It was really, really bad. It just didn't work at all. The first we tried potty training bed, the three day method of just no panties, just bare bum, doing a reward system, having her sit on the potty every like 15, 20 minutes, throwing her on the potty the second she started peeing on the floor. We were gonna do that method and Eli and I actually did it together. It did not go great. She was almost two, which is for some people, I guess a really great time to start potty training. I guess it's right before a brain development or something, I don't know. But we tried that with her and it was horrible. I won't go into details as to why it was horrible, but I will just say it was horrible. <laughs> so we decided to stop. And the reason that I had actually been potty training bad was because I was pregnant with Meredith and I didn't want three kids in diapers. I already had two kids in diapers. I did not want three kids in diapers. But at the end of the day, we decided it was better to just stop, deal with three kids in diapers instead of like stressing ourselves out to the max. Because of that experience, I really prolonged potty training Charlotte. We did like kind of dip her toes into it several months ago, just doing things like, you know, in the morning when she would wake up, we'd have her go sit on the potty. We had the potty out in the kitchen area so that she could see it and be familiar with it. We did like little things to kind of dip her toes into it. But then when I was pregnant with Lily and had the uh, intrauterine growth restriction diagnosis, I was uh, for a time really stressed. That was a crazy whirlwind of time and so I decided to put the dipping of toes into potty training on hold because I had other things that I wanted to focus on and things that just took more priority than potty training Charlotte. So Lily is now four and a half months old and I have been thinking for a while I need to potty train Charlotte but I don't want to potty train Charlotte and then a year from now have to potty train Meredith. It's just the thought of it was so not great. So I decided that I would potty train Meredith and Charlotte together and that I would start the next day. This time around, Eli was not home. When he was going to work for his first shift of the week, I was starting potty training with the girls. Just for reference, Charlotte will be three in August and Meredith will be two in August. So they're not quite three and not quite two yet. Because I knew I had to potty train Charlotte anyways, I 
figured why not just take something that makes me feel incredibly overwhelmed and make it worse. <laughs> Two birds, one stone kind of a thing. And I thought maybe if I potty train them together, they can have like a potty training buddy and I can totally plot them against each other and be like, whoa, you get a chocolate because you peed on the potty like Charlotte, did you see this? The reason I potty trained the week that I did, the reason I started then was actually our build was supposed to start that week. Unfortunately, our build got pushed back. And so even though that week was supposed to be like full on people at our property getting stuff done, no one was going to be coming and I thought to myself like you know what I really would love to take advantage of the weather and have the girls outside as much as I can but if they're not going to be wearing anything from the waist down I don't want them out on the deck with a bunch of workers in our yard I'm not comfortable with that I want my kids to know that I respect their privacy so I kind of felt like I either do it this week or I don't do it at all. <laughs> so the next day Eli went off to work and I got the girls up and we waved goodbye to their diapers. I walked with their basket of diapers and I threw them out in the garage and they saw me do it and I said, we are done with diapers, say goodbye. And Charlotte was like, whoa, no mama. So we again did the bare bum three day method. I don't call it a three day method, everybody else does. I disagree with that term because it is not a three day method. It is a, you spend three days, four days, five days, really jumping in on it, just throwing them in. And here's the thing, they are not fully potty trained after those three days. Saying the three day method makes it sound like your child is perfectly potty trained now. No, they get the hang of it sort of after three days, but after that, you're still working with them a lot. Anyways, I did not want a repeat of having to throw Bev on the potty all the time because I think when we were doing that, it was too much for her. We were throwing her on the potty all the time and she would be crying and she didn't want to sit on the potty and I'd be trying to sing her songs and read her books and do flashcards and she was, uninterested. She really just did not like being thrown on there all the time, being dragged away from her toys to sit on the potty. She didn't like it and I didn't want that again for my kids. I wanted them to be able to play with their toys and go around the house and be able to sit in front of the TV and watch a show. Some people try to get their kids to sit on the potty non-stop. I let Charlotte and Meredith roam around the house. I kept them out of their room because their room is carpet <laughs> and I kept them off of the couch and those were really the only places they were not allowed to go was in the room and on the couch but i did have on the ground doggy mats you can get them at the dollar store or something but it's for like for older dogs or for potty training dogs funny enough and they're basically just these mats that soak up liquid i had them dispersed around the house i had them in the living room in front of the tv so that way if i turn on a show they could sit on the ground sit on a mat and if they peed it just got absorbed into these mats and that made a really big difference that was really helpful for me that i felt peace of mind i could leave them for like 30 seconds so i could go to the bathroom and if they happened to pee while i was gone it got absorbed into the mat and it's not all over the place but of course i had lots of paper towel and disinfectant wipes close by me at all times there were lots of accidents but every time they sat on the potty and peed in the potty i gave them chocolate and it didn't have to be a big chocolate i just gave them a chocolate chip and they thought that was amazing <laughs> and to get them understanding that peeing on the potty equals chocolate i gave myself chocolate when i went to the bathroom if i had to go to the bathroom i brought the girls with me and i was like listen and they could hear me go pee and i went mama gets a chocolate so then I would take chocolate as well. And they were kind of like, oh, that's cool. So then once they went on the potty the first time and got that chocolate, that was kind of a light bulb turning on in their head. Like something clicked and they went, okay, I think I get this. The first day was difficult because it was just accident after accident after accident. And as a parent, when you're potty training, you can't get mad at your kid if they go pee on the ground because they're learning. So it takes a lot of patience. When I say a lot of patience, I mean a lot of patience to just see mess after mess after mess, especially when you're potty training two kids at the same time and you're having to just clean up mess after mess after mess after mess. And it can get really frustrating. The first day I was like headstrong. I was like, you know what? It's gonna be okay, we're gonna do this. The second day in the morning, I kind of lost track of where I was supposed to be mentally with potty training the kids. 
and I started to get a bit frustrated in the morning and I was like, oh, like another accident. And then I went, whoa, gotta stop. They're learning. This is brand new territory for them. They're trying to understand. I cannot get frustrated with them because that's, that's not gonna help. It's not gonna be beneficial for them if I'm getting frustrated because they're learning how to go pee on the potty. And it really is a mindset. You kind of have to decide before you jump into potty training, are you going to jump in and are you gonna persevere and you're gonna be determined and you are not turning back or are you going to allow yourself to kind of have a get out of jail free card? This time around, there was no get out of jail free card for me. It was, we are doing this. We are not putting diapers on again. So on that second morning, I kind of had this, should I, should I stop? I'm getting frustrated. Like I don't want a repeat of last time. And I went, nope, I'm going to get myself another cup of coffee and I'm not stopping. And, and I don't want to say quitting or giving up because you know what, I've been there. And sometimes you need to stop and it's not giving up it's postponing and that's okay and you know what if it is giving up that's totally fine you are allowed to give up you are allowed to stop but this time around I was not going to give up I was not going to stop I was determined that I was gonna get this done so the second day was definitely very difficult but on the second day Meredith did have her first number two in the potty which neither of them had done that yet they actually hadn't gone number two on the ground either, which was great. Are you so chatty? Yeah. This video is partly all over the place, but potty training is all over the place. So I think it kind of works. <laughs> so when Meredith went number two in the potty, I actually brought Charlotte over and I was like, Charlotte, look at this. And that's the other thing. You have to just take your enthusiasm and then increase it by like 10,000, which is pretty high for me because I so badly wanted them to understand that this was a good thing to go pee in the potty that I just like exploded with joy whenever they peed in the potty. But the girls loved it. Like Meredith, as soon as she peed in the potty for the first time and I went crazy celebrating, she was like, yeah, like this is sweet. I did something good. So when Meredith went number two on the potty, I brought Charlotte over and I was like, look, and then I gave Meredith three chocolates and Charlotte kind of looked at the potty and then looked at me giving Meredith three chocolates and then looked at the potty and kind of had this like, huh, look on her face. 15, 20 minutes later, guess who else had a number two on the potty? <laughs> so plotting them against each other was actually very successful. So day number three was a lot easier than day number two. Now that does not mean that day number three was easy. It just means it was easier than day number two. Charlotte really started to understand it. And she would put herself on the potty by herself. She didn't have any accidents that day at all. Meredith had a couple, but again, she's a year younger than Charlotte. I will mention as well that some people say like, look, when you potty train your kid and you do the three day method, where it's just like cold turkey, you get rid of diapers, do not have them wear pull-ups. Do not give them pull-ups ever. When you go out, when they go to sleep, never put them in pull-ups. I disagree. In order for me to have a relaxful sleep and a better morning and not be consumed with laundry, there is nothing wrong with me putting pull-ups on my kids at night. And I will tell you that Meredith actually, as a not even two-year-old yet, pulling her in pull-ups whenever she naps and whenever she goes to sleep at night, she has only peed in her pull-ups a couple times. If you can kind of figure out how long it takes for liquids to go through your child's system, you can know when to give them fluids and when not to. So an hour and a half before bedtime or before nap time, I will give the girls a little bit of milk and I'll tell them that's all you get, it's all done. This is sign for all done, so I'll say that's all done, it's all you get. And then by the time they go down for naps or bedtime, they've already been on the potty and gotten that through their system and out of their system. But giving them the pull-ups gives me peace of mind to know that just in case they do have more in their system or they didn't get all of it out of their system and they pee in the middle of the night, I'm not gonna have to get up at 2 a.m. to change out sheets or I'm not gonna have to wake up in the morning to two beds that need to be changed. But I told my kids, you are not allowed to pee in these pull-ups. These pull-ups are like panties. You cannot pee in them 
and they very, very rarely do. A week after we started potty training them, it was Bev's birthday. And so we were out all day and we kept them in their pull-ups. And that was just peace of mind for us, for Eli and I, so that while we were out of the park, and doing things we didn't have to be freaked out about oh my goodness like are they gonna pee their pants or not if they happen to pee their pants because we didn't have a toilet with us right away it's okay we're not gonna have a ton of laundry but at the same time let's really make sure that we're taking them to the potty and Meredith I think she only peed in her pull-ups like one time while we were out and we were gone all day it just took us constantly taking them to the potty and again when you say like the three day method, it kind of leaves this idea of, oh, after three days, my kid will be completely potty trained. They'll know when they need to go potty. They'll be able to go by themselves. I won't have to remind them. And that is not the case at all. After three days, your kid may understand that they're supposed to go pee in the potty. But you know what? Kids are kids. Sometimes they forget. Sometimes they wait too long. They don't know how to pull down their panties on their own or boxers if you're a boy. There is a million different ways in which you are still potty training your child. I started the three day method two weeks ago and the girls still have accidents. <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that they're perfect and they can go to the bathroom all by themselves. No, I am still on full time potty training with these kids. I remember watching those potty training videos and I'm not a research person. When I was pregnant, I didn't read any books about pregnancy or labor and delivery. When I wanted to start potty training, I didn't read any books on potty training. But with potty training, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna look at a couple videos and just see what other people have to say, because this is brand new territory for me, and it's not like labor and delivery where your body kind of knows what to do. I have no idea what to do. So when I looked at these videos, trying to find some advice, some methods, some ideas. They were all so unrealistic. It was like we said goodbye to the diapers in the morning and didn't have an accident at all. And they were potty trained in less than three hours. That's a little bit of an over exaggeration. I didn't see anyone say, you know what? This was really, really hard, but here's some things that I think helped. No one said that. Not the videos that I saw at least. I'm sure there's a billion potty training videos out there and I'm sure there are at least like three that involve a parent being a lot more realistic when it comes to potty training, but I didn't see it. And so it was really discouraging for me, especially with Bev, that I walked into it having this expectation of, it's gonna be difficult to get her to go pee on the potty, not it's gonna be difficult for me mentally and emotionally because it was very difficult for me mentally and emotionally. It was hard. It wasn't just hard to get them to do it, it was hard for me and my mentality to keep going, to not get frustrated, um, to have a good attitude about it, to have a lot of grace for them, to have a lot of grace for myself. I wish I could have had someone tell me, it's going to be hard for you. <laughs> it is going to mess with your brain. It is going to make you feel like a failure. It is going to make you feel like you are climbing Mount Everest with no survival tools on your person. Good luck. No one told me that. All the potty training videos I saw and even advice that I would hear from others was like, oh, it's gonna be okay. And yeah, like we did it in this amount of time. Like no one, no one told me you, Rachel, are going to have a very hard time. It is very hard as a parent to deal with this. No one told me that. So I'm telling you that if you've never potty trained a kid before, I'm telling you. Give yourself a lot of grace. Be very patient and kind to yourself. Be patient with your kid. Be gracious to them. Don't get frustrated with your kid or yourself. You're not a failure. Your kid is not a failure. This is a huge new learning curve for them and for you. This is new. It is big. It is not easy. And you know what? There are a million ways to do it and they're not wrong. None of them are bad. None of them are individually more correct than the other. It depends on the kid. It depends on you as a parent. What method can you do that's going to not drive you insane? It takes discipline. It is um, a very, very difficult time. <laughs> I'm not trying to give any future potty training parent nightmares in this video but I also want you to walk into potty training going like okay I remember Rachel said this is gonna be hard for me and I need to give myself a lot of grace I got a full pot of coffee ready for day number one I want you 
to be prepared for what potty training will most likely throw at you. And as I mentioned before, it's been over two weeks, but my kids are still having accidents and that's okay. They are so much better than they were. I mean, actually today in general, like this day that I'm filming this, it's two o'clock and they haven't had any accidents yet. So that's awesome. And occasionally your child may regress a bit in their potty training and that's okay too. As long as it's not out of a rebellion thing that they're purposefully peeing in their pants out of rebellion, that's different. But some kids like my kids are currently experiencing, there is a bit of a regression and you just have to grit your teeth. Don't get frustrated, drink more coffee, eat more chocolate or tea. I know some people are not coffee drinkers. I don't relate to you, but I, um, I value your your drinking of tea because that leaves more coffee for me. What was I saying? <laughs> and just off the top of my head, thinking about it, something that I found really helpful was having something to look forward to a few days into potty training. For example, we started potty training the kids on a Tuesday morning. We had plans to go out with really good friends of ours for dinner Thursday night. So in my head throughout all of Tuesday, all of Wednesday and all of Thursday, it was just get to Thursday night, just get to Thursday night. <laughs> and having the knowledge that I was gonna get out of the house, that I was gonna have a break, that I was gonna enjoy some good food and see some good friends and have a good time, that really got me through some of the difficult cleanups. <laughs> me on the ground, cleaning up pee again, going just, get to Thursday night, just get to Thursday night, just get to Thursday night. And of course we have the luxury of my parents being willing to watch our kids, especially during potty training. In fact, I think my parents were just thankful that I was finally doing it. <laughs> they were not gonna argue with me wanting to go out on a Thursday night after having potty trained my children. Friday morning, I got up, the kids got up and I felt completely refreshed and ready for another day of paper towels and disinfectant wipes and bare bums and messes. <laughs> so to sum up this very somewhat chaotic, I'm sure, video, take it easy on yourself. Wait till your child is ready. And you know what? You may not know if your kid is ready until you try. And you may try and go, you know what? They are not ready for this. The first time we potty trained Beth, I don't think she was ready for it at all. But I think a big reason for that is she's the oldest. She didn't see other kids going pee on the potty. She didn't experience that. She didn't have that in her mind. When I started potty training her, it was just this random brand new, thing that she had never seen before. But when I potty trained Charlotte and Meredith, they've been watching Bev go on the potty for a very long time. And so it was already something that they in a way understood. They had seen their big sister do it and now they get to do it. So that's a big reason I think why I was able to potty train Meredith specifically way younger than I did Bev because she had been seeing it for so long and also because she had a buddy to work with. So yeah, just make sure your child is ready. Give yourself a lot of grace. Give your child a lot of grace. Try not to get too frustrated. I think if I had to sum up this video in one word, it would be grace. Give yourself a lot of grace. Give your child a lot of grace. It does get easier. I can promise you that. It's really, really hard in the beginning and it will get easier. It might get a little more difficult than what this easier was. It might get a little more difficult over here, but it will get easier again and then eventually your children will be completely potty trained. And oh my goodness, the money you will save on diapers is amazing. Hopefully you have been able to take something from this chaotic video. But again, I think the chaos of the order of this video really goes well. Yes, with the chaos, that is potty training. <laughs> if you have any other questions about how I went about potty training or what I did, etc., that I did not cover in this video, please ask me down below and I will do my best to answer those questions. And if you've been there already, you have potty trained a child, please leave your tips down below for the rest of us. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, that like button, and I'll see you guys in my next video.